Today I'll show you how I made this portfolio filter that allows potential clients to filter by the service they're looking to hire for, animate smoothly between states, and ultimately results in more inquiries, which has led to an amazing first year of freelancing for me, and I genuinely attribute some of that to this one feature on my portfolio. Now just a disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Framer, but I do actually use Framer for my personal website and I built everything and I followed all of these steps to build my own site as it is today. First you want to make sure you're building your portfolio with Framer's CMS. I've linked Framer University's guide to Framer's CMS in the description. Use it to set up your portfolio grid as a CMS collection and come back here to build the filter. Just make sure that you have one CMS collection that contains all of your case studies as individual items within that collection. So here you'll see I have a projects CMS collection and I've got eight items, eight projects that are each one tile in my portfolio grid. And if I click this back button here, you can see here that on my homepage, I've already inserted the CMS collection block here, like insert collections. For me, it was this projects collection that I inserted inserted here. Um, and then I just formatted this one block the way that I wanted it to look and it applied it to all of them. Now, if you have a CMS collection block that you haven't linked yet, you just want to click on the list layer under the layers tab on the left side here, and then make sure that the source is linked to the correct CMS collection on the right here. The other thing we want to do to set up is go back to the CMS and click on edit fields. And here you'll see all the fields that you have for each of your individual case studies and each of your projects within your CMS collection. For me, I've got a ton of fields but you wanna make sure that you have at least one service field here. So in order to do that, you wanna click this plus, and then you wanna click on option. That'll create a new field, which you can then rename as service. And then under options here, you wanna type in all the services that you wanna be able to filter by. So for me, I'm gonna type in brand design, graphic design, and click on add to add another one, and content creation. Now these are the three main categories of service I offer, and this is usually what people are looking for when they come to my website. Now I'm in the middle of working on a few big web design projects. Once those are finished, I'm gonna add web design here as an option as well. Now you can also reorder where this new field you just created appears in the list on the left by just clicking and dragging it. So I'm gonna just drag it all the way to the top so it's easy to find. Now you wanna go through all of your case studies, find the field that we just made, this service field, and you wanna select the service that's associated with that project. In this case, it is brand design. Now after you do this for all the projects, you wanna go back to the editor, and then you wanna add whatever you want your filters to look like. So here, I just have text, I don't have any visible buttons. These are gonna serve as the buttons for me, but of course you can design it however you wanna design it. But on the left side here, what's important is you'll see that I have a container for all the content on this page. I have the hero section being contained by one container here, and then under that, I have one container that contains both the filter buttons, and the portfolio grid. Even within this filter container, uh, you'll see that I have each of the elements that I want to be clickable as filters as their own text object. Now you wanna select the container, the layer here, that contains both the filter and the project list. And then right click and choose create component. I'm gonna name this filterable portfolio grid. Click create. Now we're inside and editing the component that we just made. We need to make a variant for every possible filter result. So up here, I've got three buttons. So I need to make three more variants. In total, we'll have four variants. This is the first variant with nothing selected. Each of these is gonna look different. So to create the variant, I'm just gonna click on this name, variant one primary, and then I'm gonna click on this plus variant button to the right. And then I'm gonna start editing things within this variant two. First, I'm gonna select the project list. This is the collection, not the project block, but the project list. And then on the right under content here, I wanna filter. You can click on this filter button and then I'm going to add a filter. And here we wanna select the field that we created earlier. For me, the field that I'm using is service one. And then I'm gonna choose convert and I'm gonna change this to equals. So what this is doing is it is only showing the projects where that specific field equals brand design. So that is filtering it for you. So this would be the result that we get if we clicked branding up here. Now that's not all for this variant. I also want to click on branding and change the color to white to indicate that it's been selected. So in theory, when someone clicks on branding, it's going to turn white to indicate it's been selected and it's going to filter all of these projects down to just the branding projects. Um, at this point, it's probably good to name these. I'm going to name this defaults and I'm going to name the second one branding. Now I want to repeat those steps again for the other two buttons. Click on the default variant, click on plus variant, Rename it to graphics this time. Select the project list, add a filter. I'm gonna choose 
service, the field that I chose, that I created earlier, equals, and then I'm going to choose graphic design this time. Now we've got a different set of projects that are filtered, and then I'm going to click on graphics, the layer that I want to use as the button, change the color to white to show that it is selected. And I'm going to do that one more time, clicking on default plus variant, renaming that to content, project list, filter it by that same field from earlier, equals, and then content creation. And then uh, change that color as well to white to make sure that it is showing that it's selected. All right, so we've got all the variants, the, all the possible forms that this component, this block could show up on the website. Now we gotta build the interactions that actually transition us between states. So first I'm gonna select this branding button. When it's clicked, I want it to transition to the branding variant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on branding and I want this to take us to this variant, right? So on the top right here under interactions, I'm gonna click this plus button, new transition, set variant, and I'm gonna choose the branding variant. So now in theory, if I go back to the home page and then I preview this page and I click on branding, it will automatically animate the transition between the two variants. Now back in this component, I'm gonna do the same thing except linking graphics to the graphic variant and then content to the content variant. Now, not only that, I wanna go into each of these individual variants and I wanna make sure that these send us to the right place as well. So even though we're already in the branding variant, if you click on this, I don't want it to do nothing. I want it to unselect and send you back to the original variant. So I wanna link this branding button back to the default variant. But we've already got a branding interaction here, which carried over from the default. So I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna click plus, new transition, click, and then go to default here. So now what that will do is if I preview this, I can click on branding, it will filter it. And then if I click on it again, it will bring me back to the unfiltered default variant. And not only that, I need to do the same thing within the graphics variant, delete this graphics interaction, new transition and transition back to default. And then the same thing for content here, I'm gonna select content, remove that interaction, make a new one and send it back to default. So now, if we were to preview it, we've got a fully functional filter that will work no matter what button you press, even if you press something and deselect it, it'll send you back to the default. So we've got the core filtering functionality worked out here. Now to make this responsive, you wanna make a new variant for each breakpoint. So you're basically gonna make two variants of each of these four variants. So there's gonna be a desktop, a mobile, and a tablet version of all four of these. So in the end, I'll show you what it actually looks like on my live website. This component ends up having a lot of variants in here. You've got you know those four, primary branding graphics content, and then you've got tablet projects, branding, tablet branding, tablet graphics, tablet content, and then mobile, all projects, mobile branding, mobile graphics, mobile content. Um, you wanna make sure to build it the same way, it's the same steps, you're just changing what it looks like for each breakpoint. Now, once that's done, you basically have the core functionality and you should be all set if that's all you wanna do with your filters. Now, that should give you the full functionality here of the filterable portfolio, but there's one more tip that I've applied to my own website that I think would be useful for you as well. So if you look at this project here, God's Image Concert, this is a project where I did event branding, but I also did a flyer, I did some signage design. So it's not purely branding and it's not purely graphic design, it's actually both. In this case, I would like the project to show up when branding is selected and when graphics is selected, not just one or the other. But you'll notice that within the CMS, the field that we created only allows you to choose one option at a time. So I can't actually indicate under God's image that there's graphic design and there's brand design. You can only choose one, right? So what I've done is I've actually created two fields here, service one, service two, with the same options, except service two has a none option here in case it is a purely brand. It is a only one service applies to it. <clears throat> then you can choose none and you can just have one selected in service one. But if there's two, then you got the option to add two here. Now in the future, when I add web design as a field here, I might add a third one here. I might just duplicate. You can right click and duplicate a field. This allows you to, once you have those two in there, 
If you were to edit that component that we created earlier together, instead of just filtering this by one filter that chooses branding, you can actually add multiple filters here. So I have one where service one equals brand design, and then I have a second one where service two equals brand design. So if one of those two fields contains brand design, it's gonna show up here. And same here, I've done the same thing for graphics, where under the project list, I've got multiple filters, and you just gotta set it up across the board there with the right filters for the right variants. And then you'll have the ability to assign multiple services and then have the filter work where you'll see this project showing up in both graphics and branding. And that's how you add the ability to filter by service to your portfolio grid using Framer. Let me know if you have any questions. You do not need a paid plan to test out this functionality to fully build this, but in order to publish it, you will need to subscribe to one of Framer's plans. If you decide to do that, use code EDWARDCREATES to get a discount, and I'll have all this information in the description as well. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think, and thank you, Framer, for sponsoring this video.